Hey everybody, welcome to CSS Hacks for the wonderful elements of Page Builder and WordPress. And today we're just gonna extend upon the pseudo element tutorial I gave you last time. And we're gonna use it to introduce some other content to the forms widget, which currently today you can only add fields. There's no additional way of putting titles or descriptions in. So let's just jump straight in. And what we need to do is target a element of created class, which I've already applied to the widget under advanced into our custom CSS. And the particular class we're looking to target is this element of form fields wrapper, which I found by using the normal web inspector and trawling through all the amount of divs that element that creates. So what we need to do is to be able to target the divs that sit with inside that wrapper, which will be each and one of our field sets. And the way we do this is by basically putting this statement in here, followed by the colon and mth child, which is a class that allows us to target each one. And if we just quickly have a look at that, what we can do is we can just chuck background color in to see that we've got the right one. So there we go, we know we're talking to the first field and had we change this child to two or three or four, we would specify accordingly. So let's stick with the first one and let's just get rid of that statement as we've proved we're on the right one. And now we're gonna put in our pseudo element of before and now we can actually put some content in place. So again, the content field, let's just say, hello mum. Okay, now we can see that we've got the original title for the field, which is still a selectable item, and the text sitting behind it, which isn't. But we need to now sort out the formatting. And the easiest way to do this is just to target the actual wrapper itself. So not the before element, but the wrapper, which includes the before element. So we just take a copy of that first statement there without before on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to display this as a flex. Now we won't see any changes until we adjust the directional flow. So we're gonna use the flex flow, which allows us to do a couple of things, but it's a shortcut. And we can now specify column. And now we can see that they're on separate lines, which is brilliant. And there's still you know, one selectable and one isn't. So now we just wanna align our items. And the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna say we would like the items to line up to left. And the way we can do this is by using the flex start. If we want it on the right, we could do flex end. So there we go, we've now got our formatted content and it's as simple as that. And if we wanted to change again, which one, we just change the nth child. And if we wanted to be able to move stuff around the place and say, let's have more content after each field, so we can just copy and paste and change the children. We can also change the before pseudo element to the after one. So we can have content after the field as well as before. And you can basically rinse and repeat this all day long. So for each of the elements, we could have a before and after statement. So it's as easy as that to add additional content. And then you just need to be able to style it. So anything in this before element can be styled like any other element. So if we wanted to increase the font size to 100 pixels, or let's just make it a more reasonable size and set the font weight, we can do so like so. So there we go. Now further to this, I mooted in the last tutorial that you can add other types of content. Now we could have replaced this statement with a URL and put an image in it, but you can't then style the image. So the easiest way of putting a, say an image background in is let's now display this element as a block give it a 100% width, so it now fills up the containment, and create some padding. So let's just put some basic padding all around so far. Okay, so we've now got a larger box. And now we're gonna insert our background image, which I already have one saved on the clipboard, and we're gonna paste this in. And this uses just the background image property and specifies a URL with brackets and inverted commas around the URL statement. And now we've got our background picture. And let's just position that to center. Now there's lots of other properties you can do in order to place your images correctly and move them around the place. And all of them I advise go over to the W3 uh, CSS schools or CSS tricks and they can tell you all the other types of properties. So there we go, we've got our simple style and let's just change that font color to white. And there we have it. We now have a background image heading for one of our classes. And as I said before, we can just literally move this around to each of our elements. So there you go, I hope you've learned a little bit more about pseudo elements and how CSS can actually add some additional value to the already wonderful widgets in place and 
for now that's all from me until next time